Uh, good afternoon. As was mentioned, this study is joint work with uh, Ms. Jennifer Monje, uh, Associate Professor at uh, Pamantasan ng Lunsod ng Maynila, and also my research assistant, Ms. Mika Munoz. We also have had some help from Norlisa Nordan and Aya Rasuman in uh, doing field and digital interviews. It has been more than 10 years since DSWD Social Pension uh, program known as SOCPEN commenced in 2011, with the program growing considerably in terms of budgets and total beneficiaries, becoming the second largest social protection program only next to Pantawid. With some ongoing legislative initiatives to double the benefits of social pensioners, it is crucial to conduct a process interview of the SOCPEN. The talk is structured as follows. First, we give a brief background of the SOCPEN followed by a short review of related literature. We then discuss a, an overview of the SOCPEN design and present the main empirical findings obtained from DSWD documents on the SOCPEN, interviews with 33 program implementers, and 28 senior citizens, including beneficiaries and non-beneficiaries, as well as the analysis of the 2020 Annual Poverty Indicator Survey conducted by the Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA. We close with a summary and a discussion of policy implications and recommendations. To start with, the expanded Senior Citizens Act of 2010, or RA, uh, 9994 established the Social Pension for Indigent Senior Citizens, or SPISC, also referred to as SOCPEN for short, and gave the Department of Social Welfare and Develop Development, or DSWD, the responsibility for implementing the program. The objective of the SOCPEN is to provide indigent senior citizens cash, to augment their daily allowance on food and medicines. The program provides a monthly stipend of 500 pesos to qualified beneficiaries. The SOCPEN payouts were then carried out quarterly with the elderly beneficiaries con collecting their cash assistance from their respective barangays. These days, the payouts are done every semester. At program onset, the DSWD sought to uh, assist 1.2 million indigent senior citizens who were identified in Listahanan on a uh, 8.7 billion budget allocation. Insufficient funds, however, had prompted the department to target only around 140,000 seniors aged 77 or over. The SOCPEN budget allocation has since then increased exponentially to about 23.4 billion pesos in 2021 for a physical target of close to 4 million senior citizens for 2021, nearly two-fifths, 37.8% of seniors in the country. The monthly cash assistance has remained at 500 pesos month, uh, since 2011, although SOCPEN beneficiaries received extra help in recent years from the unconditional cash transfer of the train law and the social amelioration program last year. As I mentioned earlier, there's also pending legislation in both the House and the Senate to double the cash grants received by social pensioners. As pointed out in a World Bank study, the introduction of SOCPEN has practically doubled the reach of old age pension in the Philippines. The coverage rate for senior citizens from SSS and GSIS is around 20 to 25%. But with SOCPEN, coverage has become around 40% as of 2016 and over 60% in 2020. This study, which we are now presenting, involved a process evaluation of SOCPEN, which sought to review the rationale, the design, and delivery of the program. In the Philippines, social protection revolves around managing situations that adversely affect 
the well-being of the poor, and various marginalized sectors, including the elderly. Since 2007, the government has adopted a definition of social protection consistent with definitions of international organizations that suggest that social protection can be viewed as having protective, preventative, promotive, and transformative functions. From 2009 to 2017, the country's public expenditure on social protection has grown, averaging at 0.9% of GDP or 5.9% of government expenditure. The bulk of the social protection program has been on social assistance programs including Pantawid and SOCPEN. The increased public investments and improved policies in social protection in the past decade have been paying off with the number and proportion of Filipinos deprived of social services dropping as suggested by trends in various indicators for monitoring the SDGs. What baffles me, however, is why the global SDG indicators still puts a coverage of 20.5% for old age pension, unless this only um, pertains to SSS and GSIS. The figures, however, in other ASEAN member states, including Thailand and Malaysia, and uh, Singapore and Brunei, cover both their contributory pensions like SSS and GSIS as well as our, their non-contributory pensions like SOCPEN. Implemented by DSWD, SOCPEN seeks to improve the living conditions of eligible indigent senior citizens. The theory of change assumes that when inputs such as budgets, monitoring and evaluation mechanisms, and key players are utilized well, they lead to intermediate outcomes such as efficient distribution of the cash assistance and relief for, for the elderly from the deprivations of minimum basic needs. The program is successful if intermediate outcomes become final outcomes, such as the indigent elderly becoming empowered to attain decent living conditions, the elderly being enabled to invest in their human capital, and inequalities reduced in the country. For any program, it is vital to have an operations manual, which SOCPEN only finalized June of last year. The SOCPEN operations manual describes the program objectives, logical frame, as well as business processes, but the current draft is quite terse and can be improved considerably by including a section on grievances and documenting governance structures and institutional arrangements, including the roles and responsibilities required for exacting accountability. As pointed out in both the OM, the Operations Manual, and the World Bank study that I mentioned earlier, the DSWD implements the SOCPEN through various units in the, in the central office, plus the field offices, and with the cooperation of local government units through the Office of Senior Citizen Affairs, or OSCA, at the city and municipal levels. Transfer of some of the big-ticket DSWD programs to the National Commission on the Senior Citizens, or NCSC, including the SOCPEN, is currently underway. As was pointed out earlier, the initial master list of possible SOCPEN beneficiaries was first sourced from Lista Hanan. But since 2014, OSCA has taken over the targeting system. Seniors applying for SOCPEN submit to OSCA a, uh, uh, or the city or municipal uh, SDE, the Social Welfare and Development Office, a birth certificate or other valid government ID that contains the senior's photo and date of birth. They're made to fill out an application form and provide a certificate of indigency from the barangay where the senior citizen resides. These documentary requir requirements can be personally given to the OSCA or city or municipal uh, social welfare development office or through their designated representative. The OSCA and the CMSD, MSWDO then assess the eligibility of the program applicants using age, health, and economic status as criteria. 
if the applicant is receiving pensions from GSIS, SSS, PVAO, the AFP, MBAI, or other insurance companies, or is reg or uh, obtaining regular income or regular support from family, then the applicant is deemed ineligible. Program applicants are also evaluated on their health, whether they are frail, sickly, or disabled. Although the Local Government Code of 1991 devolved administri administration of social services to LGUs, RA-9996 still gave DSWD the mandate to implement SOCPEN. The department, however, is jointly implementing SOCPEN with the LGUs. The program has had many changes over the years. From 2011 to 2013, SOCPEN used Listahanan to identify potential beneficiaries, but since Listahanan has imperfections in its poverty targeting and the database can get easily outdated given poverty dynamics, the DSWD allowed, even as early as program inception, for the acceptance of walk-in applicants when an elderly indigent is not in the listahanan. Furthermore, in 2014, the definition of a social pensioner was relaxed without regard for the elderly's poverty status in the listahanan. Throughout its existence, SOCPEN's operations have been funded by the GAA as part of the social protection programs implemented by DSWD. Only seniors age 77 and above were uh, targeted for SOCPEN up to 2014. Then in 2015, the minimum age of targeted beneficiaries was reduced to 65 and further down to 60 starting 2016 with the corresponding increased coverage and budgets. In 2018, the DSWD implement a ma implemented a massive validation process. And in the first three years of social pensions existence, physical targets were exceeded. But starting after 2014, the number of actually served have fallen short of targets except in 2018. The biggest gap between the targets and actual serve was in 2019, largely, as I mentioned, on account of this validation process that was started in 2018 and which continued up to 2020. Field office staff did a house-to-house -house visit to validate if the beneficiaries are truly eligible to the program, making use of a beneficiary update form. Once the data from the form are encoded into the social pension information system, they are then consolidated and uploaded to the central office's information system with a compiled data process and subjected to cross-matching with GSIS and PVAO databases. And a clean master list is then sent to the uh, field offices for the payouts. The validation led, however, to delays in payouts across the country, resulting in gaps between the targets and the actual served at over 100,000 in 2019 for Eastern Visayas, for BARM, for Metro Manila, and for Calabarzon, for, and gave a national aggregate of 832,978. Last year, uh, uh, DSWD was authorized to download programs to LGUs under the Bayanihan app, which expedited the release of funds in 2020, but uh, pro problems persisted in validation in Eastern Visayas and BARM that, that, and, uh, that led to having these regions continue to have gaps between targets and actual served. With the lapse of the Bayanihan Act, downloading of funds to LGUs had to be discontinued in 2021, except for LGUs with good track records. As of April 2021, gaps were at over 200,000 in Metro Manila, Calabarzon, Eastern Visayas, as well as Soxargen. No, no, no cash distribution has been made in BARM as of April 2021, starting in 2020. As I had mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, our review of the design and implementation of SOCPEN involved also the collection and analysis of new primary data consisting of key informant interviews and focus group discussions. This approach is supplemented by an examination of secondary data, such as a review of existing laws catering to the elderly, policy documents, other DSWD administrative orders, as well as an examination of the PSA's APs and another survey called the Family Income Expenditure Survey, or FIES. 
we initially targeted a total of six, 60 seniors from different categories coming from Metro Manila, Balance, Luzon, and urban and rural areas of Visayas and Mindanao. Primary data uh, were designed to be collected through face-to-face -face in, uh, interviews with senior citizens, including SOCPEN beneficiaries, seniors who have been denied cash assistance for whatever reason, elderly that had been delisted uh, after uh, enjoying the SOCPEN cash assistance for some time, and those that did not intentionally avail of the SOCPEN. However, because of the pandemic, online interviews were conducted in place of face-to-face -face interviews, and much fewer seniors than originally designed number of seniors participated in our interviews. Senior citizens interviewed for SOCPEN, uh, for this uh, SOCPEN process interviewed, uh, are mostly female in their uh, mid-60s and, uh, at, and at their advanced ages and are seem to be in, still engaged in the informal economy. In this cohort of 28 respondents, majority are widows and did not finish high school. For program implementers, a total of 33 implementer respondents from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao participated in focus group discussions conducted. Over half, 54% of them, had been in the SOCPEN program for only five years and less, while the rest uh, had been in the uh, pro program uh, in uh, um, um, longer than five years, with a handful clocked in at uh, about 10 years or so since the program in uh, uh, since program inception. Majority of the implementers interviewed were from the uh, uh, central office in Metro Manila, followed by Calabarzon, Eastern Visayas, and Region 10. The following are, are our key findings from the interviews and discussions uh, with uh, the SOCPEN program implementers and se selected senior citizens. Among seniors who are part of the program, they agree that SOCPEN is a vital means of providing social, assist social protection. When asked where the cash assistance goes, they claimed it goes to food and medicines and that sometimes family members also benefit from the food they give. Uh, they bring, rather. And uh, although they are grateful for the cash assistance, some of them claim that the amount is not enough for them, their maintenance medicines. They suggest that 1,500 pesos should be good enough to support their medical expenses. Beneficiaries express disappointment with the delay of payouts that was exacerbated by the pandemic uh, last year and the year before. Uh, payouts were already done semestral. While it makes sense for implementers to distribute cash twice a year because of simpler logistics and to reduce the risk of infections in the from the pandemic, but for the seniors, a quarterly payout is preferred as waiting for half a year is a long wait for them. Some elderly reported that they also get benefits from the LGUs, but this varies across locales. Some cities, such as the city of Manila, siguro iboboto ni Isko, no? uh, they are more generous to its elders than others. According to senior citizens interviewed, the application process into SOCPEN varies and can be easily politicized. One senior citizen claimed that some beneficiaries do not meet the criteria of indigency as prescribed by law, but become uh, recipients either because the pensioner exerts clout in the community or they are relatives of those who work in the barangay. Some submitted complete documents um, for application into the program but were not interviewed. Others were interviewed several times before they eventually got into the program. In Metro Manila, some waited, wait listed applicants received verbal reports that they had qualified but that they, but they were not informed when the cash assistance would begin while some were rejected outright even without the customary visit of LGU staff to their domiciles. In the Visayas, many found the application and, and payout process efficient, however. Implementers fully understand that by design, SOCPEN should only be targeting indigent elderly and that the cash benefit is only meant to assist seniors with their food and medicines and not to fully support all their living expenses. According to implementers, one in five indigent uh, seniors do not actually get, um, uh, do not actually, uh, should not be qualified. No, But uh, later, we, when we show you data from nationally representative surveys, uh, we will show that under coverage of the poor is actually much higher than 20%. 
uh, previous modes of uh, payouts include included fund transfers to LGUs, whereas uh, currently DSWD centralizes all the payouts. Some hybrid uh, arrangements continue to exist, however, uh, particularly for selected LGUs with a good track record of liquidation. Some SOCPEN beneficiaries receive their cash support from DSWD through daycare, daycare workers, others from payout centers, while, in area, while uh, others in areas where access to banks is easy, they get uh, their cash to cash cards. Since only a fixed number of beneficiary slots are given per barangay, some SOCPEN applicants get waitlisted until either someone dies or transfers out of the program. Practices, however, seem to vary. In some cases, the senior support will still receive the money after presentation of the death certificate, but in other places, the cash automatically will go to the waitlisted applicant. According to implementers interviewed, DSWD still does not have formal links with the SSS for cross-matching of SSS pensioners' names uh, reportedly uh, with uh, because of privacy issues. Oh my gosh, you know. Thus, it is safe to assume that there are SSS pensioners who may still be in the SOC 10 list. Lastly, implementers express strong concerns about the persistent pro problem of being understaffed in the program. Regular DSWD employees have to wear additional hats during payouts by becoming special disbursing officers or SDOs. In, in some areas, daycare, daycare workers and even healthcare workers are deputized to handle crucial activities such as facilitating applications of eligible uh, senior, senior citizens, conducting payouts, and addressing complaints and other issues. An often repeated complaint in the central office is that only seven people are tasked to work on the program despite SOCPEN becoming the second largest SOCPEN social protection program of the DSWD in terms of budget and beneficiaries next to Pantawid. A listing of all activities for the various phases in implementing SOCPEN would suggest that for a semestral disbursement, it would take a total of 175 days to conduct the entire program implementation, equivalent to eight months' work for what should actually be done in six months with the current human resources. Now, the, uh, the AAPs uh, of the PSA conducts a number of, um, uh, has a, collects a, a number of useful information that are pertinent to SOCPEN. Results of the APs 2020 in particular suggest that SOCPEN increased by 78.5% the old age pension coverage of SSS and GSIS in 2020 that was just at around 30.6% to 53.5%. SOCPEN reduced coverage gaps for the elderly, especially among the lower parts of the per capita income distribution. However, there is still a very big chunk of seniors without old age pension. Among the bottom 50% of per capita expenditure distribution, which per capita income rather, uh, which I referred to in um, previous work as low income Filipinos, as much as 5.38 million senior citizens are without SSS or GSIS. And of these 5.4 million, 3.6 million are still not covered by SOCPEN. So in other words, SOCPEN has an undercoverage rate of 66.1% among the bottom 50%. APS 2020 data also shows that a considerable share of senior citizens benefiting from SOCPEN actually do not need the assistance as much as two out of five senior citizen beneficiaries, or in other words, 41.2%, belong to the upper 50% of per capita income distribution, and thus we think of this as a program leakage rate. Further, as much as 282,000 out of the uh, estimated 3.2 million SOCPEN beneficiaries in APIS, equivalent to about 8.9%, are reported to be availing of SSS or GSIS pensions aside from SOCPEN. 
This, of course, may be a misunderstanding of the survey question, but it might also be possible that because of poor digitalization, the lack of a national ID for senior citizens so far, and also, as I mentioned earlier, because uh, there's no cross-matching with uh, SSS, at least institutionally, the linkage is not there between DSWD and SSS, there are cases of SOC 10 beneficiaries who may actually be escaping the scrutiny of validation processes at LGUs, as well as DSWD and other government agencies that are in charge of pensions. When we think of the current level of cash pensions provided to SOC 10 beneficiaries, we may wonder, how much is enough for senior citizens who are, you know, who are indigent? No? While there are plans in the legislature to, to double the current support to 1,000 pesos uh, for monthly stipends, an interview, interview suggested that they need 1,500. Well, well, is there a way to decide what, what uh, you may be using nationally representative survey data? So what we did was we used another survey of the PSA called the Family Income and Expenditure, Sur uh, Expenditure Survey, the uh, 2018 FIES, with, with, with the prices in that survey adjusted to 2020 prices. Uh, and because of this, we were able to notice that the current so SOC 10 cash assistance of 500 pesos is only around 7.5% of the average expenditures on food and health at the bottom half of per capita income distribution. So DSWD and Congress may indeed need to seriously uh, increase uh, the, the, the cash assistance. But uh, we were suggesting that maybe it should be done by having three levels of cash support. Maybe you give 1,000 pesos for the lowest income decile, 750 for the second decile, and uh, maybe 500 pesos for the third to fifth deciles. This will not only provide bigger assistance to those who are in need of um, bigger or in much bigger need, but all, will also correspondingly give a bigger relative impact on spending for the needy, as this amounts correspondingly to 17.7%, 12.3%, and 7% of the expenditures on food and health for the poorest of the poor in the first income decile, the poor but not subsistence poor in the second income decile, and the low income but not poor in the third to the fifth income deciles. In summary, the SOC 10 has contributed to improving coverage in the country's uh, old age pension system. The SOC 10 is uh, um, viewed very positively by uh, program implementers and senior citizens alike in the sense of the government providing social assistance targeted for indigent elderly who are without pensions. However, more than 10 years into existence, SOCPEN continues to have a number of implementation deficits, and we suggest the following. First, increase the value of cash assistance, but re-examine who should benefit from the program. Merely doubling the cash would just double the budget. So it's important to, for legislators and program implementers to examine if we really should be giving universal social assistance to senior citizens, uh, uh, accounting for costs, especially given the myriad of problems that we are facing amid the pandemic, or would we want to just continue targeting SOC pen for merely indigent elderly? Second, however, we need to clarify the definition of indigence and tie this with poverty, because what do you mean by indigent? Isn't that, doesn't that mean poor, you know, or at least low income status for seniors, no? If, if, we, if, if SOC 10's target beneficiaries will continue to be uh, indigent seniors. The current definition that's used in the field to identify indigency is just too loose and lacks a poverty focus. While the listahanan is not a complete list of poor households, but it is still very useful. There could be ways to link SOC 10 with the list listahanan. Since official estimates of poverty among the elderly continues, uh, tends to be very low, the DSWD could be using a more general set of poverty lines than the official poverty lines. For instance, DSWD could use the near-poor definition that, that, they have a, that they have defined for the elderly to identify indigent elderly, um, in which case um, the DSWD will have to delist a number of beneficiaries, particularly those in the upper 50%, of the income distribution uh, using the uh, proxy means income data from this tahanan. Further, 
BSWD could uh, differentiate cash assistance, making use of several income cash uh, income thresholds. We recommend 500 be given to those low income but not poor. Uh, in other words, those with incomes between the poverty line and twice the poverty line. 750 to those who are poor but not but not subsistence poor. In other words, incomes between the um, the the poverty the subsistence poverty line and and the poverty line and 1,000 pesos monthly assistance for the subsistence poor. For this to work out, all SOCTEN beneficiaries must be in the list Hanan so that their incomes can be estimated with the proxy means income model. This suggested scheme will reach a targeted around 5 million low-income senior citizens at a budget of 40 billion pesos. Third, um, deploy dedicated staff to the SOCPEN program alone. A persisting problem faced by SOCPEN is the dearth of personnel dedicated to the program. This seriously undermines the swift and careful distribution of much-needed cash assistance as well as analysis of SOCPEN beneficiary databases. Fourth, regularly update the SOCPEN operations manual at least annually. Next, regularly update the social, the social pension beneficiary database and conduct regular analytics on it. It's crucial to merge the beneficiary database with other interoperable databases in the department, such as Listahanan, uh, the SWEDE indicators, um, the social amelioration program database, and for future databases to be developed, including the CD CBMS. If uh, SOCPEN beneficiaries are not in the list, the DSWD can request LGD assistance to collect the requisite um, uh, data um, from CBMS maybe and subsequently analyze the data gathered once the CBMS instruments have been finalized by the PSA. Lastly, the program must adopt a digitalization mode of cash payment to SOCPEN beneficiaries by using e-payments and e-wallets for cash distribution. It's critical that SOCPEN be understood by everyone as an attempt by government to provide old age security to seniors who need assistance the most. The suggestions given here can enhance services to lessen the logistical burden for current BSWD staff assigned to SOCPEN, while in the past, SOCPEN beneficiaries may have wanted a means of socialization by actually getting the cash, but with per persisting risks of COVID infections, the use of digital payments can protect the elderly. This is also uh, part, uh, a, partly a critical step for, for the SWD to uh, digitalize its processes, Although this might not be used for everyone, having this available can be a fast way to help seniors who need urgent help. In addition, the department should continue to strengthen its analytics on the use of its administrative data systems, especially to determine how far its social pr protection is impacting on empowering beneficiaries. Thank you. This ends my presentation.